All right, so Drock just released a video about 47 minutes ago talking about some information that is exclusive to the Supreme Club, which means that, uh, you know, unless you're in that club, even CC such as myself aren't going to, you know, have this information. I don't know why, but what I wanted to do here, because, you know, I value his opinion. I, you know, big shout out to Big Pop Drock. I don't think he needs an introduction. So my goals for this video are one, to find out what that information is two, to see what his reactions are, and three, to see, you know, how I um, absorb this information and what my, I guess, thoughts are on this. So consider this a reaction to a reaction. <laughs> guys, Big Papa Drock back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. I hope you guys are having a great day, sending some love, some good energy your way. Hey, you too, We're bro. doing something a little different today on the channel, by the way, guys. We are going to be uh, maybe you call, I don't know if you call this a reaction, uh, <laughs> but maybe more of just my general thoughts about something that Plarium has just revealed to the Supreme Club members. So if you guys didn't know, I am a part of the Supreme Club. Oh, baby. Surprisingly enough, what really <laughs> shocked oh, me about this is it isn't all whales and krakens in here. There are actually free to play players in the Supreme Club. So really surprising to see that. I thought it would be completely people. I didn't know that. I thought it was just a, a place for high spenders, but you know, somebody actually did comment on one of my videos talking about the RSC being available or like they have a, a free to play player in there. But um, I guess it's, you know, 100% confirmed now because even uh, Drock is saying it. People that have uh, spent money in the game. Um, so that's cool. That's, that's a cool thing that Plarium's done. But the reason why I wanted to talk about um, Supreme Club stuff is because of this developer's answers to your feedback section that is only something the Supreme Club members can see, which is really interesting. So these are answers directly from the developers to common questions, mm -hmm. and I think they're worth talking about um, and also sharing with you guys who maybe are not in the Supreme Club. Who's giving the feedback? Is it just the content creators? Is it the Raid Supreme Club? Anybody on the RSC, is, it, is that where they're getting the feedback from? Or are they like going through comments or is there like a survey or something? That's, that's what I'm wondering. I'm, I'm really surprised that they're not sharing this feedback with everybody. Yes, bro. Only in the... Exactly. I don't know why Polarium's not sharing it with, like you said, everybody. You can't ask a small demographic of people and think that they represent the greater majority of the player base or i don't know maybe they're just testing the waters because they give updates all the time and they let everybody know so why is this specific thing only available to the supreme raid club supreme club hub at least to my knowledge um so i want to start this off just by acknowledging that i personally think that's a mistake mm -hmm. um i think plarium should be sharing this kind of feedback to everyone and everywhere now granted they are allowing us to talk about this it isn't like hidden or anything like that but okay. i do think it's one of the things where yeah so why why is it only exclusive to the rsc if it's not there's no limitations on on anybody sharing it that, that's you know it, it's a weird thing when i think about what makes great development teams uh great or what mm -hmm. makes get, you know video games fun to play from a development perspective i think there are really two things that i personally look for uh, and the first is clear honest transparent communication from a development team. Absolutely. I mean, that is by far the most important thing you can get when you're playing a video game. I think a lot about playing Call of Duty and how often the communication over the years has been very muddy um, mm -hmm. from some of the development teams that have worked on that game. Not all to be fair, but there's nothing that will frustrate you more as a player. Just a side note, I grew up in the 2007, 2008 era of Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2. It's it's just not the same. I feel like the last great Call of Duty was probably Modern Warfare 2. It, it just hasn't been the same since. Then when you don't... Although I have been playing a lot of COD Zombies for, for BO6. ...have uh, just honest, transparent, you know, and clear communication because you don't know what's going on. You don't know what to expect. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is timely... Uh, updates to the game, timely balance changes, timely updates, fixing bugs in a timely fashion. Yes. I think that's the other part of what- I mean, they just fixed that damn red dot for Siege, didn't they? Or is it, they, they said they were going to fix it. Why is it that when something like Geomancer has a bug that lets players one key clan boss or, you know, do billions of damage in clan boss, they fix that quick, fast, and in a fucking hurry? or when you can switch the health with the Sand Devil using uh, Nogdar. 
they qu they fix they fucking fix that shit right away, right? But when it comes to uh, Wixwell teams or when it comes to fixing Yumiko team, you know, whatever side you're on, again, Yumiko or Trunda, it takes forever for them to do that. Or the red dot takes them forever to fix or to come out with a balance for Tarsh and Marishka or updating older champions so that they can work in this current meta. What makes a good development team good is that when things need to be fixed, they need to be addressed, they're done quickly mm -hmm. and they're done correctly. Um, now, look, I'm gonna- Yeah, it takes forever for Raid, for Polarium to do a course correction. Be completely honest with you. I, I think Polarium is not the best in either of these areas. I think that they are better in the communication side of things, at least when it comes to talking to content creators. Yeah. Um, there is a way for us, for example, to get a hold of people in the Discord and ask questions. But I think overall, like their communication is just okay. Um, they have the Raid Digest, they do things, but they don't necessarily share everything with people or answer questions that people really wanna know consistently. So I would rate them as okay in that. Uh, there is absolutely no denying that they are terrible at fixing things in a timely fashion. And I could list a million different examples, exactly. but the Hydra changes, balancing yep. Trunda, balancing champions, um, fixing Polymorph, still not done a year later. God, Polymorph, dude. Armands, they're probably gonna wait. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get into there it. Are all the other things that need to be addressed in the game, they are incredibly slow at yeah. fixing stuff. Um, it is by far my biggest frustration with Plarium to be completely transparent. I really wish they would put a priority on fixing this stuff and whatever it may be sooner. But then again, they don't really need to because people still spend, right? Yeah, I'm as guilty. Exactly. Um, and of course, I don't know how it goes on that side. I'm not like a, a game developer or anything. So it could be a lot harder than like it's 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 probably a lot easier said than done for sure. I'm not denying that, but but when you but when you show us that you can fix something very quickly one way, when it benefits the player base, but you don't do it the other times when it doesn't really matter or has nothing to do with money, and it's just like about the players being happy, you guys drag your feet like Pop Drog said, and and again like he's bringing up here is just like, and we've talked about this on this channel before. It's just like if you guys continue to spend or engage with certain content and um, they see that in their numbers, whether it's monetarily or in their, in their um, data analysis, they can see who's participating in everything. And if they don't see any dips or changes in engagement or spending, that is a signal to them that everything is okay and they can continue on their course without correcting anything. So if you spend, you're supporting their decisions to, and again, I'm not, I'm not telling you what to do, but it's at the same time, you can't complain about something and then also complain that <laughs> that nothing's changing. Guilty of that as anybody else. So my hope is that, you know, when something like Fateless comes out, there's more competition that forces them to actually start putting a prioritization on quality of life updates and on just fixing things in the game and really taking player feedback. But that's neither here nor there. I wanna talk specifically about what they're showing us in these developer answers to our feedback. Um, so let's take a look at specifically what they're addressing here. So first and foremost, space management issues. Yes. Char pulling and champion storage limit. Yes. In the next update, we will add 200 new slots to the reserve vault, this reserve vault, completely free of charge to help ease those storage limitations. Awesome, that's a win, cool. Yeah. Give us more space in the reserve vault. That's fantastic. You know, that really is helpful, I think, for every player, especially when- I think- I think for the most part, it's this specific thing, space management for champions, is more for like end gamers. I would say I've I've kind of run I've ha I've run into this issue before where like my my reserve vault and my max or like the the master vault and the reserve vault are both full, even when maxed out. And then you have your entire main roster that also gets filled up, and it's just like if you're trying to pull a bunch of shards, which in this day and age like you could easily pull like a thousand shards and just have to spend time uh not gear cleansing um beating those champions into each other so you have room it becomes an issue so it's just like if you're constantly adding new champions to the game like every month you need to be upping that space the same thing right here he's going to talk about it the artifact accessory capacity like if you're adding new sets to the game 
and ways for us to farm dungeons and new dungeons and new gear and everything you got to be increasing this stuff when it doesn't cost anything i wish they would also increase the space uh of champions in the actual just main roster yeah. that's very much a whale kraken problem um so most people i think probably don't care about that but good this is a win great communication they're acknowledging here that there are space issues which there absolutely are for a lot of players artifact accessory capacity oh man this is a big one mm -hmm. while we know many of you are requesting additional storage for artifacts and accessories we're currently unable to add more slots due to technical limitations However, the team is actively researching solutions for the future. Man, this is frustrating to hear. Um, I think artifact and specifically accessory storage is one of the absolute biggest issues playing the, plaguing the game right yeah. now. But what- And we can even see that here in my account. Like we are approaching 900, which very quickly turns into a thousand and then hits cap. I'm constantly gear cleansing. It's almost nonstop, and it's like I have to upkeep this this gear cleanse thing. And and if I don't, then it becomes an issue where it's just like if I really want to farm a dungeon and I run out of space, well then that takes up even more time because I really have to sit there and look at all my gear. It's getting to the point where I'm just like I don't even know if I want to keep any more epics. I'm pretty brutal with my gear. If it's an epic and it's got even one flat stat, unless it's a special thing, I don't I don't keep it. A lot of my gear, I only keep triples. So triple there, triple, okay, not not that one. I have to roll up to 16. But um, things that are rolled up, triple. That's not, so this one gets sold. So we just, we just found a culprit right there. But it's just like triple right here, triple right there, quadruple right there. I'm doing my best to only keep the best of the best. And it's just like, we're still approaching a point where it's just like, if I decide to just dump a bunch of energy into a single dungeon i might be screwed because everything is going to go straight from here it's going to hit cap and then go straight to the reserve vault it takes up so much time to have to gear cleanse i'm going to do affinity breaker later and frost gear later i'm doing a video but yeah especially with them adding new sets into the game constantly it's just like bro like let's let's up this up let's bring this up bro what i would say is this okay if you're technically not able to add to it because of server restrictions i mean I, I guess I can understand that from a development perspective, but if you're re researching solutions for the future, I've got a really simple one. Freaking give us the ability to sort our gear by level and also sort yeah. our accessories by type. I mean, this is the easiest thing that they could do in terms of improving stuff. Currently, when you go in here, like they've broken it out, like they did a little update to this where they've broken it out, but why the hell can't I select simply blood shield amulets or blood shield artifact, you know, accessories, whatever, or pinpoint. This is part of why we have a space management issue because it has become damn near impossible to sort through all of this stuff mm -hmm. in a timely fashion. And like, if you look at my inbox, it's chock full of accessories because I've been trying to gear cleanse over and over and over yes. again. And obviously we just had the Odin dungeon where people were throwing in hundreds of thousands, millions of energy at the top end. Um, this drives me crazy. Just give us a filter, Plarium. Like, look, if you can't give us more storage, yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it's, it seems crazy that it, that's really that hard to do from a technical standpoint. But if you want to fix stuff, Give us a gear filter that actually works. Sort by level, the amount rolled versus not rolled. If it's level one, if it's levels four, five, eight, I don't know, however you want to break it down, but also just let us sort by accessory so we have an easier time of cleansing this stuff. It would make a major, major, major impact. And I really hope that they see this video and they actually prioritize that. Because right now, that is the biggest problem in the game that I personally see other than people's feedback to Hydro, which is a different video, uh, yeah. you know. In I think someone even told me that there are other games that actually have infinite storage or something like that. Um, I, I don't know if it was Watchers, or, Watchers of Realms or, or something like that, but um, if other games are doing it, how, and again, I don't know, I'm just basing it off the comments because, uh, you know, I'm not that interested where I'm gonna go check out another game to see if that's the case, but uh, don't other games do this? in and of itself. Okay, gear ascension and reworking ascension bonus. Let's take a look at this one. Gear ascension oils and extracts. We will review data on medium oil extract <laughs> drop rates and may adjust them if needed. What do you mean may? However, there are what do you mean may? You need to, bro. You need to adjust that. It's ridiculous. Not just, not just the oils or the, what's it called? 
the dust the dust bro do you know there are so many players that i've seen i think blazon actually um showed it in the discord where it was just like he dropped almost 100 chaos dust to try to re-roll something to get like crit damage on crit damage or attack on um or on something i don't know or speed on speed and it's just like he had to roll it so many times and i've seen other people on reddit show their things where they're trying to get like speed on speed and they've re-rolled like 25 times that shit's expensive bro it takes a lot of energy to try to get chaos dust and i'm, I'm a, you know i've done this too where i've shown you guys i've rolled something up like 19 times and i started out with like 100 chaos dust and i'm down to like three it's ridiculous it's ridiculous that there's not a mercy system in place for re-rolling things right enchantments are another thing when you're trying to get um like an eight an eight max on speed and you keep getting like i don't know five over and over and over again and you're blowing through your six five star glyphs it's just like okay well at, at what point does polarium say okay well you know they've, they've they've rolled enough of this material that is limited and time-based and can't really get a bunch of it unless you're paying for it and even then i don't know if those packs are are available um all the time so it's just like bro this needs to this needs to change there are no plans to introduce an oil extract mixer just yet this is fucking bullshit okay this is so wait no plans to introduce an oil extract maker but that would make a lot of sense especially if you're farming sand devil or if any of the ascension dungeons you're gonna end up once you can start farming it you're gonna end up with a lot of the the smaller uh potions like i probably have like i, I don't know like ten thousand of the smaller potions and it's it's ridiculous that you can't this is a good idea this is what pisses me off about Plarium sometimes. They've mm. got incredibly talented people. They know the problems in the game, but this is a clear example of greed not letting them fix the stuff that needs to be fixed. This is a major problem, and the rates for this stuff are asinine. Abysmal. They are absolutely asinine. Yes. Let's just take a look so I can illustrate exactly what I'm talking about here. Let's go into you know artifacts. Let's take a look at, at the amount of stuff I have here. 200 what the fuck dude? <laughs> my boy's got 260,000 of the um the small pots and look at the ratio look at the comparison and look at his chaos dust bro that tells you something it's fucking dog shit crazy bro 160,000 freaking minis Versus 8,800 mediums mm -hmm. and 3,400 Supremes. This is bullshit, okay? This is such a skewed money yeah. grab. It makes me sick to my stomach. You should never have this many of, of, the minor, of the minor thing versus the two that follow. This is completely out of whack and such an easy win for player. I mean, if they just fix this now. Because you know what? This would take literally five minutes to change if I were betting. Just simply change a multiplier yeah. when you're actually running the dungeon it is absurd that they are not going to address this like yes that's good that you're responding to the feedback but come on guys come on man like do you think we're stupid this is ridiculous <laughs> you don't want to address this stuff it's even worse with the accessories i oh swear my to god god yes just absolutely and the thing about the accessories is it uses the the oils and the dust from phantom shogun there's no tournament for phantom shogun there's no real incentive for i mean not no real incentive but the incentive is a lot different. It, it's it's different in the in the sense that Sand Devil always has a tournament going on, but for some reason they're not they're not giving us a Phantom Shogun tournament. So it's not like we're more so inclined, especially if you have a limited amount of energy and time, we're not going to be more so inclined to go for something like Phantom Shogun when we know we can spend that same amount of energy into the Sand Devil and get extra rewards from that as well brutal trying to ascend stuff here let's take a look at this oh yes ninety thousand mm -hmm. here in the accessories and i've got a whopping 98 mediums and 1298 supremes and by the way these dungeons are not easy to get to right it takes you a while to actually get there this year i've been playing for almost six years now but this year earlier like early to mid part of this year 
was when I was finally able to solidify my spider, or not my spider, my uh, Sand Devil 25 teams and actually be able to start farming them at a consistent and quick basis. This needs to be addressed. Stop dragging your feet to try to take more money out of people's pocket. Just do the right thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do the right thing. Fucking do the right thing, bro. Balance it so we get a more reasonable amount of mediums and supremes versus lessers. And the other thing that really drives me crazy, and you can kind of see over time how Plarium has gotten greedier, right? Like, I want to do an entire video on this. I'm saying, bro, do it because it really needs to be called out, but they've gotten significantly greedier over time. Oh, bro, look at that. He had the, uh, he, he had the uh, Italian um, <laughs> hand gestures going on there. Check greedier over time. And you can look, the simplest place to look is something like the potion keeps. Look at this. Yeah. The, the highest level of the potion keep doesn't even give you the minimums. Mm -hmm. And it's only stage 20. Look at that. You don't, you don't have to get minimums. Let's take a look by uh that's true you know, for comparison with sand devils okay oh look at that look at that stage 25 yeah. and the minimums are still there this is pure greed straight up that's all it is they could have fixed this they could have changed this they could do something to make this fairer for the player and they're refusing to this angers me greatly just straight up greed making the game worse solely to try to squeeze a couple extra dollars out of people's pockets in a game that's already wildly profitable. Yeah. Shame. Absolute shame on that. Glad, glad that you're speaking to it finally, but shame on you guys for not fixing it. Bonus. Oh, here we go. Here we go. And they're not going to introduce a mixer either, which is insane. So you can mix, of course, potions. Again, something that was early in the game. Another example. Yes. I don't want to improve stuff over time. You can mix the med the med exactly. potions to mediums or the mediums to superiors. Bro, he's on it. He's on the nose with it, bro. He knows. He's he's pointing it out. That's a perfect example of of, of them knowing that they can, proving that they can implement the mechanics, just choosing not to for greed. He's right. The greater superiors. Why can't you do that? Why can't you do that with Sand Devil and Shogun? Well, Pop Rock, it's for money, of course. And the simple answer, guys, is money. That's it. There's no other answer. There is no other answer. It is just solely about taking as much money out of people's pocket as is humanly possible. And you know what's crazy? Even with, and we, we can see this, years of playing Raid, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the player base complains. Well, let me, let me, back, let me back up there. It does matter in the sense that eventually Polarium will give us a monkey paw and do something. But at, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter because people will still be addicted to raid. People will still spend money in raid. People like me are still going to log into raid and play play the game because they are so good at the give and the take, right? They're so good at slapping you across the face and then giving you a gift. They're so good at making sure that community is like the main or one of the biggest pillar stones of raid and you know sam solstice actually pointed this out she was just like i don't think any mobile gacha game would be able to keep the attention of everybody if it weren't for community right one of the main things that we all enjoy about raid is the community i would not be playing this game for as long as i have if i wasn't kicking it with you guys in discord or making content and talking to you guys in the comments so that's a it's a huge thing here and it's such a shame because it's so transparent and clear mm -hmm. bonus locking for reworks although bonus locking isn't planned we will investigate how challenging it is to rework the ascension bonuses this is something that also needs to be addressed because this is absolutely insane how difficult some pieces are to rework i have seen people hit 17 oh 20 God. 25 Yes. rework attempts at nine of these stupid chaos oh my god he's got a plus four rotos fully blessed bro i need that shit Buster chaos or things per roll which again is absolutely insane Dude, are you guys seeing his account at first i was gonna comment at first and just be like oh look at all that red he's got a bloody wall on his roster just all red fully blessed and then scrolls down even further 
Yo, check this out, dude. Plus fours, fully blessed, multis. It's crazy, dude. It's just predatory. Straight up, it's predatory. Let's mm. look at one of what. Let's see, what's this? Two. How many rishkas. reworks did I have on this one? I can't remember. Nine. I had nine rework attempts on this. Brutal. Mm -hmm. I've had some go to 15. Like, look. I love that you guys gave us the chance to rework stuff in the first place. That's yeah. a win. That's great. That's awesome. That's a monkey's paw. We're gonna we're gonna give you what you guys want, but we're not gonna give it to you guys in the in the exact way that you want. Shit. But come on, man. Come on. You know, make it so that we can actually get the ascension that we want in a reasonable amount of time. I get you want to have it scale up. I get you want to have people spend more money to get more energy. I understand that it's a business, but please, guys. Please just do what is best for the players for once when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, we will investigate. Like, come on, man. Investigate. You don't need to investigate. You already know. <laughs> like, don't don't talk to us in this regard like, as, if we're, as stupid. if we're idiots. Like, you know that there's a problem here. Everyone has seen it. You see it. So just fix it. Make it fairer. You're still going to make a boatload of cash. You're yeah. still going to make tons of money. Just make it a little bit fairer for the player base. And... And I, I I don't know. I'm still like on the on the fence about this ideology, if you want to call it that. It's just like Palladium's gonna keep doing this, and players are just going to leave. But you know, players are just gonna leave the game, and eventually their player base will move on to the next best thing. Like I've already started looking at King Arthur Legends Rise because that looks interesting to me. I've seen a lot of other content creators cover the game, and I've seen some of the people in the comments on on that video in my community post talking about uh, King Arthur, and a lot of people are basically just waiting. They're looking for the next best thing and getting sick of Raid and uh, the Palladium's bullshit, right? And again, I don't want to detract from all the great things that Polarium has, to, not Polarium, sorry, Raid, the game, has to offer because there is a great game there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun game. Raid is a fun game. You know, uh, theory crafting is like the number one thing. There's community, there's building champions. It's a lot of fun. Pulling shards nowadays it's not that much fun to me because i pretty much have everything and i can do everything so the the hype that i used to get from pulling shards just isn't there anymore it, it, you know that's just the same if you're if you're doing uh, any type of drug if you're trying to do like uh, i don't know cocaine or something you know one hit's usually enough to get you to last like 30 40 minutes before you know it your high lasts a lot shorter and you need to get another you know bump of snow okay Let's take a look at Altar of Souls here. Here's here's another one that's just, again, a just naked cash grab. Yeah. Altar of Souls, Mythical Souls. While the Mythical Champions pool is still early in development, we don't plan to add Mythical Souls to the shop or wishlist for now. However, this is something we may revisit in the future as development progresses. Again, just a complete and utter money grab. There's really no other way mm -hmm. to put it. There is zero reason why you shouldn't be able to upgrade a mythical soul through the altar of souls like this. Should it cost more? Yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's going to be 400 of the large ones instead of 300, which is, again, super expensive and hard to do. But come on, guys. Come on, man. Come here. Like, help us out here. Even the wish list for the stuff is such a small percentage chance of getting these things yeah. that even that isn't going to massively impact your bottom line. It's very clear that this is not being fixed again because they want to make people have to spend on buying large soul stones. Just straight greed, no other way to put it. That is the honest truth. Yep. It is greed and it makes me sick because it shouldn't be like that. You can still make plenty of money by doing the right thing for the player base. That's that's the thing, right? Cuz here's he he's right. Free to play low spenders get to be happy krakens whales will still spend polarium still gets their bottom line like he's saying polarium you're still gonna make money but you can also make other people you can make most of the player base happy by implementing these changes and controls but it's just like i, I don't see it, it just doesn't make any sense to me why would you want to push away a great majority of your player base and eventually the krakens i, I think i don't know but eventually the Krakens might just get sick of this shit, right? I think. Why not make everybody happy? Krakens are still gonna spend. So, okay, at least we're addressing it though. At least we're talking about it. 
a sell all button for souls. We will consider adding this button, though it may not arrive soon. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. That doesn't bother me. Yeah. Cool. Sell all. So don't sell all. Whatever. That's that's pretty low on the totem pole. Yeah. Thanks for addressing it, though. Here's one that's actually good. Okay, this is awesome. This is a positive one. I hate being negative on the stuff, but I have to be honest, right? I have to be real. PVP modes, friendly unranked arena battles. Oh yes, my we've been God. asking for this for forever. Yes. This feature is on the roadmap, but it won't be available anytime soon. For now, other planned features take priority. Okay, this is the first we have heard them to my knowledge uh, acknowledge or yeah acknowledge that they, this is something that they've actually put on the roadmap thank you god this yeah. is such this is so important for people who play arena to actually enjoy the game to be able to battle your friends content creators battling other people yep. having tournaments all that kind of stuff this this would bring up so much hype for so many people imagine having the ability to test your teams out against other people not just in chat, but like in your clan or I guess yeah, in chat too, you know, someone's talking crap like, oh, my team's better than yours. Like, hey, let's duke it out in 1v1, like 1v1 me and Russ, bro. Like, let's see, let's see where you're at. Or content creators can now host tournaments and get people to join and there could be like cash money prizes or, you know, something like that. I think that would be huge for the community. That would be a big boost for a lot of players, for, for raid in general. This is the stuff that will make raid significantly more exciting for yeah. people to watch for viewers and for content creators to create content around this can't arrive soon enough mm. awesome playerium this is a win thank you for giving us a heads up on this i'm so glad that this was included in the developer answer to our feedback oh here we go here's another one <laughs> all right i'm gonna rant on this one pretty hard <laughs> but frankly it needs to be said packs and offers energy offers We've noticed concerns about energy pricing. To clarify, we haven't increased the prices for regular daily offers. Okay, that's fine. However, we release various offers regularly, including special seasonal ones that may offer more energy per USD. Those might be the ones you're referring to. So you might want to keep an eye out for the upcoming Halloween offers. Look, what you all did with the event dungeon was extremely disgusting, mm. straight up. like. And it's not just me saying this. Let's take a look, for example, at the smiley offers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All we had energy offer wise for people who spend for the last three months were absolute garbage, trash offers, horrific, bad ratios of energy to dollars. And you know what? You did it on purpose. They did it on purpose because they knew it was a limited time mode mm -hmm. and they wanted to take more money out of people's pockets and gave them awful deals. So, so shitty to do. Just, just hate that this is what this company does sometimes because you know what? Everybody has a brain and everyone who's trying to compete in arena, unfortunately at the highest levels, you have to spend to some amount and then hope you get lucky in order to do so, right? Yeah. So it just really sucks that you guys took advantage of it a limited time done. I say, yeah, like I know what he's talking about. I, <laughs> I don't I don't compete at, at the high level of anything. Like, uh, you know, when I first started, I was chasing the meta and everything. And, I, you know, I spent my thousands. But I, I quickly, not quickly, it took me years to realize this or, or get to this point where it's just like they're constantly going to induce power creep and keep you guys on the wheel. So it's just like for me, I, I just stopped spending. I stopped spending money a long time ago because I was just like, there's just there's just no point, right? I think the last big meta thing that I chased was Tar uh, Taurus and Marishka. Oh no, sorry, it was um, Nergigante Archer, who was supposedly at the time. I don't know if she still is. I'm pretty sure she still is. It's, it's just like magnificent for Hydra, but yeah, it's just like I don't want to be on that wheel anymore. So that's why I just I don't spend anymore. But yeah, you know, to, to, you know, I just wanted to bring that out there to talk about that because I was just like, yeah, yeah, like, I, I know what you're talking about. I, I don't know what he's talking about. Dungeon with a gear set that is insanely overpowered, mm -hmm. which is another video as well. But you took advantage of that and took advantage of the player base to milk as much cash out of people's pockets as possible. And sure enough, to their point, what's the offer that we have right now? Where is it? Where is the offer? Special progress nightmare pack. Here we go. This is already the best offer that's come across in the last three months or on par 
with the best offer that's come across in the last three months. I think we had maybe one offer in the last three months while this dungeon was open that had a, a okay amount of energy per dollar. This still isn't good, by the way, in terms of what you're spending, but this is easily the best for the last three months. And what a surprise, it comes right after the Odin dungeon ends. Shame on you guys. What a like, surprise. Come on. come on, man. It's just, it's just predatory. It just really is. And again, like we keep buying, so I guess they're gonna keep doing it. Yeah. All right, let's take a look here. Gems to energy slider. I don't know if you can see this. Gems to energy slider. We are exploring if this feature can be added to the game. Okay, cool. I'm assuming this is like you set a certain amount of gems, you get a certain amount of energy. Oh, yeah. Cool. Doesn't really move the needle for me. I think it's, you know, it helps, but it's not the most important thing right now. And yeah. then finally, time see, I don't know if you can see it. I'm leaning time saving features. We consider adding more time saving mechanics to improve your gameplay experience. We will share more details as we get closer to implementing them. Okay, another positive thing. We're ending on a positive note here. We all know that there are massive, massive issues with time sinks in raid. Yeah. Whether it's doing Doom Tower and the Hydra. fact that that's not auto, you know, instant should be immediately done once you've cleared it with the same team or whatever else. Whether it's Hydra battles not being able to be instant. Um, you know, there are so many different things. Faction wars should be instant. Like we That's one thing that's, that I'm, I'm curious about, right? If they were able to do quick battles for Demon Lord, why can't they do quick battles for Hydra? If you've shown that you were able to throw a team in and one key Hydra on auto, because they can track if you're doing full auto runs, right? Because they have missions for Arbiter or Marius or whatever, where it's just like you have to complete, or um, yeah, you have to complete uh, 10 times the hard 10 fire and I dungeon full auto and they can see if you're you know this button right here this this uh, auto button they can see if you click on or off or, or, or whatever and it, it counts if uh, you know for the mission it counts if you leave it on auto so why can't they do that for Hydra you go into a Hydra fight you leave it on auto you go in with auto and if it's a one key just do the same thing that you did for Demon Lord right is it is it that hard we should be making things easier for people, not harder. So I'm glad that they're acknowledging that. That is also a pro. Um, good Plarium, good job uh, on at least acknowledging that that's a problem. Now, here's the thing I'd say. They've acknowledged that's a problem for years. Yeah. And have only done minor... <laughs> it's just like, say <laughs> it's like, say it's like saying, I hear you. I, I see you. You're seen. I respect that. I respect where you're coming from. I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> Improvements. I think the biggest one was making clan boss something you could auto. Thank God. Yeah. Um, that was way overdue. They finally did that. And then also that making was, it so you'd have- That was another thing they dragged their fucking feet on. Super raids, which makes it a little bit better for some of these pieces of content, but realistically, not the best like there are simple things you could do with doom tower where if you not to talk too much about king arthur but you can 3x you can uh, three times that and you can do um three times super raids so you know super raids you you know you get your two for one well with king arthur you get three three for one at three times you speed. beat it once the other four get autoed or something like that yeah. you know uh it's just it's one of those things that definitely needs to be fixed and i think right now there are a lot of quality of life improvements that raid really needs to make more than new features other than arena stuff please mm -hmm. god fix all the arena stuff mm -hmm. i'm begging you but certainly quality of life especially raid bots in my opinion is the most important stuff they could focus on right now so and when i say raid bots i'm not talking about in like silver live arena where you go up against um a, a team that's been copied from another person's account i'm talking about the people who go into live arena and let a bot run their live arena battles for them, taking up the entire turn meter. So I want to end this on a both positive and negative note. Positive. Okay. Thank you, Plarium, for at least talking about this stuff. I know I was very harsh in this video, but I'm also not bullshitting. I'm being real. I feel like it was objective. I didn't think he was being too harsh. I think it was equal amounts you know you you they're, they're, we're receiving it we're just giving it back to them the way that they're giving it to us
and I'm being honest. Yeah. And I think anyone with a brain is going to understand the stuff that I talked about here. It's very clear how you guys have really put an emphasis mm -hmm. on making more money. That profit mode document was no joke. But all that being said, thank you at least for communicating with us on some level. Yeah. Please do this more consistently. And please, I'm begging you. You guys make so much money. You've made tons of money off of me, off of other people. Millions. You know, the game does well, has no signs of slowing down. For the love of God, just give something back to the player base a little bit. Please, please make an actual improvement on yes. some of these things, or at least try not to be as, as predatory with some of these deals. I know it's gonna fall on deaf ears. I know it's not gonna change but I would be remiss if I didn't ask for it. So it's better that you're talking about it. It's better that he's talking about it than not talking about it at all, right? Because if we don't talk about it, if it's not known, then that's another thing Palam's gonna see. Like, oh, nobody's complaining about it, so we're okay. So it's good that he's talking about it. Guys, what do you think about this? I know this was a long one and unfortunately mostly negative video, but I have to be real. I have to be, I have to be honest. I have to yeah. be legit. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you agree with the things that I said? Do you like the fact that they're giving us some feedback? Do you wish they would give it to more than just Supreme Club members? I certainly do. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that needs to be posted for everyone to see so that we have clear, honest, well, clear, transparent communication. Yeah. Uh, so people can actually know what is going on with this game. But anyway. I like how he stopped himself and he was like, clear, honest, but well honest uh, transparent <laughs> that was a good catch enjoy the video i'll catch you soon and uh, thank you so much for watching consider liking and subscribe if you enjoyed this content 100 dude um i think one thing that they still have not addressed is where is pack master's dog